All right, so I'm going to go over the proof of the radon nicotin theorem. Before diving into the proof, I want to talk about what is the statement of, of the theorem first. So, we have a sigma algebra A on X. On that sigma algebra, we have two measures defined. One is an arbitrary complex measure, lambda, and the other measure, it's the only one that has a restriction, is a fa sigma finite positive measure, mu. So the theorem gives us a de decomposition of lambda relative to mu, lambda, in the sum of two measures. One part, this part, lambda A, will be absolutely continuous with respect to mu, and the other part of the decomposition will be mutually singular with mu. Now, more, if this lambda that we started with is not an arbitrary complex measure, but it's a finite and positive measure, then this, then this decomposition will be in finite and positive measures. And we have a complete description of what lambda a. Lambda a has to be given by a, in the integral of a measurable function. That means that on any measurable set E, the measure is the same as integrating this function over this measurable set. So, what's the idea of the proof? The proof is to the idea of the proof is to start with lambda and mu both finite and positive measures. To start with the mm, with the most simple case and go from there to the general case. The idea is to pick a good candidate to plug in here. What's this function h going to be? as the function h. So we're going to look at all the possible functions that could go here and pick an optimal one. So after we pick a good candidate to put on here inside the integral, we're going to see what's left of lambda. So if we make the subtract subtraction lambda minus this integral, whatever is left has to be mutually singular with mu. Now, to prove that it is actually mutually singular, we're going to need the following lemma. That lemma says that two positive and final measures either are mutually singular or something will happen. That something that is going to happen is going to contradict, if that happens, is going to contradict the way we have picked the function h. And that will finish the proof. This is the lemma that will let us prove radon nicotin for the finite and positive case. So we have the same hypothesis, a lambda and mu, now finite and positive, over a sigma algebra A. So either these two measures are mutually singular, or this is going to happen. There is a natural number n, and a measurable set G, such that for this sign measure, G is going to be a positive set, and the measure of that positive set with respect to mu is not zero. So for the proof we'll start by using the hand decomposition theorem for each of these sign measures. So by the hand decomposition theorem we have a sequence, a n, this is a sequence of sign measures such that a n is positive and a n complement is negative with regards to this sign measure lambda minus 1 over n mu ok so suppose one of these sets a n has measure non-zero has mu measure non-zero then we could make g equal a n and we will be done, we will be on this part of the statement. There will be a measurable non-null me, non set such that it's positive for this measure. So suppose the measure of all the a n is zero. Now, if this happens, what we have to prove is that lambda and mu are mutually singular. That means we have to give a set A such that mu is zero on that set and lambda is zero on the complement of that set. 
by this construction we are forced to do only one thing let's make a be the union of all the a n and we can write its complement like this like the intersection of a n complement the Morgan's laws so notice that on a mu is zero because it's covered by sets where mu is zero so mu of a is zero there's nothing left to show now what happens with lambda on this set so by the way we have constructed this this set is negative for this measure notice that a complement is a subset of all of these a n so since this is negative we have that lambda minus 1 over n mu of a complement is less or equal to zero so and this is less or equal to zero for any n now if we we can write this as lambda of a complement is less or equal to 1 over n measure of a complement for every n now this doesn't depend on, on of n this quantity here does not depend on n this measure is finite so we have 1 over n multiplying a finite number that does not depend on n so if we let n go to infinity this goes to zero so lambda of a complement has to be zero we have shown that they are mutually singular lambda is mutually singular now we'll begin by finding a candidate for h to put in here so we're going to define this set f set f for all the candidates to put in here so it will be the collection of all measurable positive functions such that the integral of g on any measurable set dominated by lambda of e for every e measurable so first of all we have to see that this set is not empty because we are going to pick our h from functions here we want to pick from a set that has actually functions but notice that zero belongs in f so there is at least a function here on, on zero this will be uh, zero and zero is less or equal to lambda v because lambda is a positive measure now there's another thing that we can see from this definition for any g in f we have that the integral of the whole space is also bounded by lambda of e of x and this is finite because x is a measurable set so we have this inequality for any function g on f now we can then define l to be the supremum over all such functions of this integral this supremum will also be bounded by lambda of x we, we can pick a sequence gn of functions in f such that the integral of gn converges to l to the supreme okay now we're going to define our candidate h with this sequence of gn notice that we don't really know that this sequence gn is increasing pointwise or pointwise almost everywhere so for, to correct for that we're going to define this new sequence hn x hn will be the maximum 
over G1 to Gn. This new sequence will be pointwise increasing because we want to use the monotone convergence theorem to this sequence of functions, Hn. Now, it's a perfectly good question to think if Hn is still on F. So, is the maximum of functions in F still in F? So, to prove that, we are only required to do that for two functions, and induction will give us, this, will give us the result. So, if G1 and G2 belong in F, maximum of G1 and G2 also belongs in F. Okay, we want to prove that. So we want to prove that maximum of G1 and G2 is in F. For that, we have to give us a measurable E and see if we plug in maximum inside this integral, is, is it still dominated by lambda? So, we are going to divide the space in these sets. A will be the points such that G1 is greater or equal to G2. Now, the integral of E of the maximum of G1 and G2 this will be the same of the integral of E intersection A plus the integral of E intersected A complement. Now, on A, G1 is greater or equal to G2, so the maximum is G1, and on the complement, the maximum will be G2. So, because this is a measurable set and G1 and G2 are members of this family, this is less or equal to the la lambda of E intersected A plus lambda of E intersected A complement. And this sums to lambda of E. Everything here is measurable, so just add them. Now, we have what we wanted. The, the integral of this function is dominated by lambda in that measurable set. So, yes, maximum still belongs in Fn. So, this sequence, Hn, is a sequence here on F. The integral of Gk for any n diminutive is less or equal to the integral of Hn because Hn is always bigger than at least Gn. This side converges to L so this integral converges to L so L is less or equal to the integral of Hn and Hn is a member of this family Alright, so we have all the ingredients we needed to define our candidate H. H will have to be the supreme over the natural number of this sequence, H. This is a measurable function, positive function. A good question is, is H still in F? Okay. So, by the monotone convergence theorem, the integral here is the same as the supremum of these integrals. This equality given by the monotone convergence theorem and each of these is dominated by lambda of okay. it. So lambda H is a member of the family F and the integral or the whole space Vm equals the supremum of these integrals h n and we already know that this is L. So the what we have so we already know that this is L. So what we have is that the supremum is actually attained at this function h that's going to be our candidate to define that. 
So we have our optimate candidate to plug in here. Let's see what happens when I take the difference with this measure and this integral. So define lambda s e as lambda of e minus integral minus integral e of h d mu. Now, notice that because of the way we have constructed h, this is a positive quantity for every measurable e. So this is a positive measure. It's finite as well because what well, this is finite. So this as well is finite. Everything here is finite. So the only question is, is lambda eventually singular with mu? If it is, then we are done. We have decomposed lambda as the sum of this integral and this measure, and this is mutually singular with mu. Exactly what we wanted to prove. So, if this is not happening, then by the lemma, there exists a natural number n and g such that g is positive for this sign measure. Okay? From this information we have to give a contradiction in the way we picked h. So, now, let e be any measurable set we can write E as E intersected G union E intersected G complement okay. this part of the set will be a subset of G so this sign measure is positive for this set that means if I write what lambda S is that means that lambda of E intersected G minus the integral of the intersected g of h mu minus 1 over n mu of n mu of g of e intersected g is greater or equal to 0. So in the complement e intersected g complement is still a measurable set so this quantity here, if I plug in E intersected G complement, is still greater or equal to C. So lambda of E intersected G complement minus the integral of E intersected G complement of H is greater or equal to C. We have two inequalities here. We can add them. So what happens if we add these two? Lambda of intersected G plus lambda of e intersected g complement, this is lambda of e, right? This is greater or equal to, okay, this is the only part that has positive sign, so everything negative will go to the other, to the right hand side, and we have this. This integral plus this integral will be integral of e of h mu, mm -hmm. okay, plus plus 1 over n of mu of e intersected g. I can write this as the integral of e of 1 over n, the characteristic function of g. I can add these two functions because we, I'm integrating under the set, on the same set. So this is plus 1 over n characteristic function of g. So, because e is an arbitrary measure measurable set, and we have that this inequality, this means that this function is a member of the family f. So what we prove is that this 
function here belongs in f. So what happens if I integrate over the whole space? This is the integral of h plus 1 over n measure of g. Okay. This integral over x is L plus 1 over n measure of g. This is non-zero. So this is strictly bigger than L. But L was the supremum of all these integrals of h of members in this family. We have a member of that family that the integral is greater than the supremum. This is a contradiction. So this proves the Radonikian theorem in the finite and positive case. Now we want to prove this for the sigma finite and positive case. So, if these both measures are sigma finite, then there exists a sequence of pairwise disjoint sets such that the union covers the whole space X and lambda, is finite, lambda and mu are finite, are both finite on these sets. So, we can define some finite measures. Now, for each n, define this. xn lambda n on E as lambda of E intersected xn and mu n on E as mu of E intersected xn. These are finite and positive measures, so the Radon-Nicolim result applies to this. So, we can find a sequence of integral functions such that lambda n of e equals the integral of e of h with respect to the mu d m n plus the other part that will be mutually singular with mu n. Okay, notice that since these two measures are defined on xn, we can write this as intersected xn. Now, the mu plus lambda n s e intersected xn. With this information we want to give a candidate for a function h and this measure lambda s to be a decomposition of lambda. So let's make h to be the sum of mm, hn characteristic function of xn and the lambda s measure find it as the series of these measures. Now, first of all, we have to check that this gives us a decomposition of lambda, if, we, if I integrate this on a uh, set E. So, integral of E of H d mu plus lambda S E, this will be given by because these are positive functions, and this is a positive measure, we can join all of these integral and these sum under the same summation sign. So if I integrate this on, a, on E, I'll get integral of E intersected xn of hn in u, right? 
mu. This is the same thing as this. Plus lambda n is of e. This stays here the same, and this is just the integral of the h. Now, by the way we have constructed these functions hn and these measures lambda n s, this is the same. This is sum of lambda n of e intersected xn. But lambda n of e intersected xn is the same of lambda of e intersected xn. So we can drop this sub-index n. And since this is a uh, covering a disjoint covering of x this is lambda so it is a decomposition of lambda this part will obviously be absolutely continuous with respect to mu so all that is left to prove is that this lambda is defined by this formula is mutually singular with mu so we want to prove that this is mutually singular with mu. So we have this information of, of each n, this is mutually singular with this. So there exists a sequence a n such that lambda n s of a n equals zero equals mu n of a n complement okay because these are mutually singular this is the same as lambda n s of a n intersected x n and this is the same as mu of a n complement intersected x n because this is the way that we are defining this measure m n mu n this is the same as x n minus a n so what's the candidate to be at the composition such that lambda s of a is zero and mu of a complement is zero well again we're kind of forced to do this a will be this union and a complement will be this unit will be a decomposition a union a complement will be x because xn the union of all these xn is x so notice that mu on a complement is zero because it's zero on every one of these so and now what does lambda s do on this set so lambda s of a is the sum over k of lambda k s of a that's the union on n of a n intersected x n okay now lambda k is zero on every xn that is not k this part of the formula so this is sum over k of lambda k s of um, a k intersected x k and this is zero. So in fact lambda s is mutually singular with mu. We have already proved the case lambda and mu sigma finite. Now this will be the case when lambda is a signed measure and still sigma finite. So but the Jordan decomposition of lambda, lambda can be decomposed in lambda plus minus lambda minus. This one positive and sigma finite and this one positive and finite so but the already proved, proved results we have that 
lambda plus is the integral e of let's say h1 plus lambda 1 s and lambda minus is the integral of h2 minus lambda 2 minus or over e okay Okay, so if we join this and this, we can decompose lambda as integral of e of h1 minus h2 plus lambda 1s minus lambda 2s. So we have a decomposition of lambda with an integral and something else. What we have to prove is that this measure is mutually singular with mu. So we have to find a set such that this is null and mu is zero on the complement of such set. So we so these are positive measures so and mutually singular with mu. So there exists a set A and a set B measurable such that lambda 1s of A equal lambda 2s of B. These measures are zero here and mu is zero on their complement. So again, what's the candidate to be a null set will be this defined C as the intersection of A and B. Now, obviously, C complement will be A complement union B complement. And here, the measure mu of C is of C complement is zero because it's zero both here and here. So measure of C complement is zero. Now is this is C a null set for this sign measure? So if E is containing C then E is containing A and E is containing B. And on this set both lambda 1 S is zero and lambda 2 S is zero. So lambda 1 S of E equals lambda 2 s of e equals 0. So this is a null set for this sign measure. So it's null for lambda 1 s minus lambda 2 s. And we are done. This proves that this is mutually similar with m. So it's called this part over here, lambda s. And we are done. In the general case of a complex measure, and decompose this measure like this, where these measures u and v are finite sign measures. So the result we have already proved applies for these two measures. So this will be the same as the integral of h1 d mu plus lambda 1 s e plus i times the integral e of h2 d nu plus lambda 2 s of e. Now, again, as we did before on the sign measure case, we can join this part with this part and this part with the other part. We have integral of e of h1 plus i h2 d nu plus lambda 1 s e plus i lambda 2 s e. This gives us a decomposition into an absolutely continuous part will be this and this part of the measure. By an analogous argument as we did before with the sign measures this part will be mutually singular with me. So this finishes the proof for the, Radon, the existence of the Radon-Nuclein theorem in the, in the 
complex measure case. Now, I'm not going to prove uniqueness because it was an assignment, so this decomposition is unique. This decomposition in mutually singular and absolutely continuous is unique. If this decomposition here is unique, then uh, the function that goes here is unique as well, because any other function that makes this work has to coincide with this function on each measurable set. So it has to be the same function modulo has to be the same function up to a set of new measure zero. This what's what that is what we wanted to prove. So this finishes the proof of the Radon Nicolin theorem.